Welcome to Nick's Home Court. It's episode number 37. I'm doing this on the move. I just wanted to get a few words in. Sometimes there's too much time in between my podcast, so I wanted to get it in. So you're going to hear some noises in the background. Please forgive me for that. But I just wanted to put some good information and good opinions out there as well. So as you already know, the Knicks have signed Ramon Sessions to a one-year uh, veteran minimum minimum contract. And my opinions on this, I think this is a great, great, great signing. I'm sorry. That's a little, that's, that's way overstated. I, when I say great, let me explain. <laughs> I'm like, great, great, great signing. It's a good signing. And the reason why I say it's a good signing is because he's the perfect player you want to get when you ha- when you draft a point guard at eight. You know, a player that basically should be taking over the starting roles sometime during the season, if he's good. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong, he might struggle and it might take him till next year, but your, your hope is you bring Ramon Session in, you start him in the beginning of the season just to have some steadiness, and then you bring Nilakina in. And folks, I just want to say this real quick. His name is Frank Nilakina. The T is silent. Most people know this, but it's still people jacking up his name. It's a very easy name to say. It's Frank Nilakina. You know, and I think that's a measure of respect when you know how to say someone's name and you say it correctly. If not, just like some people call him Frank, fine. He will have a nickname quicker than anything as soon as the season starts. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Now, with Ramon Sessions, also what makes it perfect is he's not coming in here to play for the Knicks thinking like Derrick Rose, no disrespect to him, but thinking I'm still a star, I'm, st- I'm a great player, or, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's not under any false pretenses. pretenses. He's coming in here, he's basically gonna be a placeholder for Frank Nilakina. And who knows, he may not even start in the beginning of the season, it might be Ron Baker, it might be Frank Nilakina, depending on how everything starts out. So, but, but the truth be told, we're going, we, we're going to need some veteran in that backcourt because even if Frank Nilakina is really good to start the season, you're talking about an 82-game season to which this young player is not accustomed to. So he's going to miss games. He's going to hit a wall. It's 82 games. This is big dog time now, you know. Przingis hits walls. Every 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 player hits walls in their rookie season. Their body have to adjust to it. So that's why it's good to have a guy like Ramon Sessions and even a Ron Baker. Now, one thing I want to talk about is I keep hearing, I've you know, Knicks need to sign a veteran point guard to mentor the guards, and I don't understand that saying because like I said I've and I always encourage people to go to basketballreference.com I go there a lot and I go there because I listen to the talking heads and the other people and then I say well let me check for myself the information's right there and they have all the information they have the advanced stats they have the regular the regular stats as far as points per game and assists and rebounds and stuff like that and you can look up every player that's ever played in the NBA and they even have now college basketball reference you can check players in the college so it's a great place to go to and when I went there I noticed most guards most point guards of course we know the great ones they start as soon as they come as soon as they as soon as they put on the NBA uniform they're starting top 10 picks are starting now sometimes you have top 10 picks that maybe start later on in the season but they eventually start and a lot of them, this mentor thing, I, I, I don't understand that because only thing I see a veteran player, understand what I'm saying? A veteran player doing is teaching the young guys how to be professional, how to practice, how to prepare for a game. Like say you know you have a practice, what do you do the night before? You know, you don't go to the club four in the morning if you have a one o'clock practice. You're a grown up now. It's time to start being professional, things like that. So that's what they're for. Because say what you want about Carmelo, he's serious about playing that basketball. You, you can hate Carmelo all you want, 
but he's never been i mean yes he has a personal little scandal going on but he's never been one to not be ready for his games and his practices so anyway now the reason why i'm i'm, I'm i don't understand this mentor thing it was telling me it's first of all it made me think that the Knicks are not fully confident in Frank Nilakina, but now that they signed Ramon Sessions, maybe they are confident in Frank Nilakina, or maybe Hornacek, who loves Baker, who sees himself in Ron Baker, is confident in Ron Baker. And I'm gonna tell you, Ron Baker is a tough kid. He's a tough kid. He's Della Vadova. He's a guy that's gonna get up in your face, get his nose bloodied and broken, and he's 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 a Nick. I'm telling you, I love the kid. Anyway. So, but when I think of a mentor, now Derrick Rose said, or his agent said, that Derrick Rose didn't want to be a mentor for Frank Nilakina. And that mentors are for players who don't play, who can't play anymore, who are not playing or who are on their last legs. And some people felt like he was salty or, you know, he was upset when he said these things. And the truth is, yes, I do agree he probably was upset. And, and, and also all of those reports about him wanting to come back to the Knicks. Let me tell you something. People will use the New York market to drive up their prices all the time. I've seen it happen with the Yankees. Yes, the Yankees. Don't think it just happened to the Knicks, because I remember years ago, some of y'all don't remember, but before the, the Yankees' latest dynasty, they wanted to sign Greg Maddox when he was leaving the Cubs. And it was the Yankees and, uh, and Atlanta Braves. And he flirted with the Yankees and flirted with the Yankees, and he signed with the Braves. Because they always, because New York is the media capital of the world, you better, that's why they troll New York all the time. Because it, it gets the most ratings. It's going to always, because there's so many people here. So anyway, but I must say that I think that his agent was partially right. You're saying Frank Nilakina needs a mentor. Well, I'm sorry. Wasn't Jeff Hornacek a great NBA player? He was also a combo guard. He played some point guard. If you look at his assist totals, he played some point guard. He also played next to one of the greatest point guards in the history of basketball, John Stockton. Why did Nixon say he needs a mentor? Let's call up Stockton. Or better yet, let's call up Gary Payton, who was 6'4 and possibly the greatest defensive player in history. Why not put him on the payroll if you're serious? You know, it amazes me. Big men, they hire, they've been hired, they have hired Hakeem Olajuwon, things like that. Why not, and especially with all these guards that don't play any defense, why Gary Payton doesn't have a, a job as far as a defensive specialist? But maybe he doesn't want it. Let's be clear. Maybe he doesn't want it. But what I'm saying is if you're going to get a mentor, that's a mentor. Someone who is not playing anymore. You know, someone who... Or, or better yet, like how Jason Kidd was in his last year with the Knicks. Someone who is on the way out. They, they, a person, you know, that's how it works. That's how it always has worked. So I never, under, I, I didn't understand when it was talk about this mentor, mentor. You know, I mean, like, I think that what they're doing. See, this is the thing. The Knicks building the team the way they're building it, which I'm so happy about. I think it's uncharted water. It's uncharted waters for the New York Knicks franchise. And people will say, well, you know, they've had bad teams before, but they've never had a team like this where they're building organically, which I'm loving. So they're nervous. They don't want to get any pick wrong. They don't want to get anything wrong, especially picks in the lottery. Remember, the Knicks drafted Patrick Ewing. They got Mark Jackson. They got Rod Strickland. Now, my orders are all messed up. <laughs> and the draft pick that really set the Knicks back during the Mark Jackson era is when they drafted Kenny Walker. He was supposed to be a great player. Kenny Skywalker, it was supposed to be Mark Jackson, Kenny Skywalker, Patrick Ewing. That was supposed to be like their big three, but it never happened. They traded Mark Jackson. They traded Mark uh, uh, Rod Strickland, which, was, which Knicks have always done throughout history. Trade the young player who's developing for the guy who's already been a star who's old, but he still has a good two years. So maybe we can, you know, you can't rush it. It just doesn't work that way. That's why I'm against the Kyrie trade. 
And don't get me wrong, I take Kyrie on my team. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. But if it's going to deplete you of all of your assets and you won't have ability to put anything around Porzingis and Kyrie, and then Kyrie can opt out in two years because the Knicks will be probably a 500 team with those two players without a good team around them. Maybe they might make the playoffs. And he'll, he's, he might want to leave in two years because guess what? New York is a jungle. And Kyrie and, and Porzingis is on the same team and they're balling out. Even though they're balling out, they'll be blamed for the Knicks' failures. So the Knicks need to build the team organically and have now in two years from now, when the Knicks are, or hopefully, when, if the Knicks are doing better, then you that's when you sign a player. People keep always talking about cap space. Cap space does not matter if your team sucks. NBA players have gotten smarter. Face it. They're smart. They're not, I'm not going to your team just because of money. I'm not going to play in New York, Chicago, L.A. just because of money. If your team is good or you can sign three of us at one time, I'm not going there. So that's why it behooves you to build up your team first. Durant wouldn't have signed with Golden State if Curry and Klay Thompson and Draymond wasn't there. He wouldn't have signed with them. That's how it works. That's how it works. So you got to build up your team. You got one building block. You got actually a few building blocks. You got a franchise player in Chris Tapps, hopefully. You got, uh, uh, I'm, I can't wait to see what Hernan Gomez is. You got Tim Hardaway Jr. I feel like, honestly, in my opinion, I think he's ready to explode. I really think he's going to have a great year. I really think, I really think it is. I think, because I've always thought he had the ability to score and be a really good scorer, and I always saw that even his rookie year, he was pretty fearless. But sometimes you go through, play NBA players are humans. They go through emotional changes, and, you know, and, and, and he had to be humbled. Now that he got humbled and he learned how to play in the NBA, he learned how, see, the thing is, it never was, let's be real, it's never been Tim Hardaway Jr.'s talent it's been all the other stuff. His stubbornness, not listening, not playing defense, and not being an NBA pro player, professional being the key word. Now he's learned that. And I think that this is going to be a really big year for him. So anyway. Now, something else I want to talk about. Like I said, this podcast won't go too much longer, but unless I get into some kind of rant flow. <laughs> but uh, I want to talk about Carmelo Anthony and, and what I believe right now. I think Carmelo doesn't want to leave. I think all of this is a front. I don't think he, I think, put it like this, I think he'll leave to go to Houston. Yes, I think if, if everything falls in place perfectly, I think he'll leave to go to Houston. But as reported today by Stephen A. Smith, got to give him his props by, well, I don't know if they reported it or they just assumed it, but I heard them say it first, so before I get into it. But they were saying that, you know, it appears that Carmelo is like, I want to go to Houston or I'm going to stay here. And I think that with Carmelo, he's probably looking around and saying, yo, I could, because you understand, sometimes veteran players, if they could play with the young pups, sometimes they like that shit. Sometimes they like it. And the fact that Phil Jackson is not here no more. And say what you want, Carmelo's a millennial. And, 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 and trying to motivate them with tough love just doesn't work. It's no disrespect to millennials, but, but, but they've been raised differently. Parenting has changed. We use encouragement instead of tough love, which is nothing wrong with that. So the way Phil Jackson went about it, tearing a person down and hoping that their competitive spirit would fight through that, it doesn't work that way. You have to say, hey, look, I think you were great, but I think you could be even greater if you do this. Then you might get these millennials to listen to you. But to say, oh, well, you know, you'll never change and challenge them that way or you'll never be all around player. They're going to be like, okay, well, fuck it then. Fuck you. That's just how they are. So now that it fills out the picture, don't underestimate the friendship between Carmelo Anthony and, the, and, 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 and Porzingis. Don't underestimate the friendship between Carmelo Anthony and Tim Hardaway Jr. Don't underestimate the words between Scott Perry 
I mean, between what Mello said about Scott Perry, that we had a great talk. And Scott Perry, Scott, damn, I'm messing his name up. Scott, Scott Perry seems like a straight shooter. You know, when you hear him speak, I notice there's these guys that are eloquent. He's not so eloquent. What I mean is, he's more of a straight shooter. He's not gonna mince his words. He seems like a, 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 a dude, like an older dude from the block that knows what's up. And he's gonna talk to you straight up. And I can tell, I bet he told Mello, listen Mello, if the right deal comes along for us and for you, if the, excuse me, the right deal comes along for us and for you, we'll make the deal. I believe in win-wins. But if it's a deal that's only going to benefit Houston and yourself, I'm sorry. We'll keep you because we like you anyway. We don't want to get rid of you. And I guarantee you what happened during that meeting is exactly what millennials love. Listen, we're going to try to get you that trade. We're going to try to do that for you. But if we can't do that, guess what? We'll be happy to keep you, bro. We'd be happy to keep you. Przingis is going into his third year. We think he about to explode. Yeah, we're going to transfer and make him more of the franchise player, but we love you. You an all-star, Przingis all -star. Trust me, they painted that picture. Trust me. And, and let's be real. Hornacek don't want Melo traded. <laughs> Y'all think, think Hornacek wanted some trade? He don't want him traded. Because you got to understand something. Hornacek is in his last year. People say, oh, well, he has two years. No, you got to understand about coaching. In football, basketball, baseball, when a play, when a coach is in his second to last year, it's always treated like their last year. Because if the coach is allowed to get to his last year without an extension, this is what you call a lame duck coach. This is the season, and you're going to hear more articles. I mean, you're going to hear more articles. You're going to hear more stories and, and articles written about the situation that this is a make or break year for Hornacek. It is. Hornacek trying to win, man. The fuck y'all talking about tanking? Okay, so if y'all going to tank? Because I know Hornacek was like, listen, if we tanking, y'all give me an extension and we can tank. Give me a three-year extension and we can tank all you want. But right now, I got a year and a maybe year. And not only that, Hornacek is probably saying, yo, this might be my last coaching gig. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Scott Perry. You think Perry wants a tank? <laughs> he just finally became a GM. You think he wants a tank? I'm telling you. He did I mean he got a five year deal, so maybe he does. But the clock is ticking. In New York City, the clock is ticking, man. And I always told people, the way you build your team, I like the Boston Celtics model. I like the way they did it. You put good players together. You have them play together and you grow together and you see what you get out of that. You don't just take and sign players who are non-NBA players and, and let your young players rot and get bad habits. Now the Sixers might turn around and be great, but they still got to mesh. They still got to learn how to win. They still might be two years before they being really good. Even Because you know why I say that? Russell Westbrook, James Harden, Kevin Durant, they didn't just turn around like that. They still lost a lot of games until they learned how to win. So they probably two years doing some real noise and damage. And then you got this guy, Embiid, we don't even know how healthy he is. Hopefully he can be healthy because he's great. He will be great if he's healthy. So anyway, I just wanted to put that out there. But again, I have a feeling, I have a sneaky feeling that Melo won't be traded. And I'm not mad at the Knicks because, first of all, I think the Knicks are thinking like this. This is where, now, when I say I don't want the Knicks to tank, let me explain that. This is how I'm looking at it. The Knicks start the season with Carmelo Anthony on the roster. They try to win games. One thing about this team, and I'm going to tell you what's gonna, what, what, what happens with them every year. They start off looking good and they tail off. And things, what happens is after 30 or 40 games, teams really start to really know how to beat other teams. And the really good teams are going to continue to win and the bad teams are going to start having prolonged losing streaks because guess what? The playbook is out on how to beat them. And that's what, happens to, that's what has happened to the Knicks the last three or four years. Now, 
I think what's going to happen is, I mean, not what's going to happen. It's not a prediction. I think what the Knicks are going to try to do, well, that's also a prediction. Look at me. <laughs> I think what the Knicks are going to try to do is if Melo's on a team, they're going to try to make the playoffs. They're going to try to win. But remember, they're not going around signing a whole bunch of veterans. No, no. They're going to try to win with their young team, with Melo, with Noah, if he can still play. And, and, and they're going to try to win with the team they have. Because they still have, I mean, let's be real. What would be their starting five right now as of the season starts? It'll probably be Ramon Sessions, Tim Hardaway Jr., Carmelo Anthony, Kristaps Porzingis, and Willie Hernan Gomez, right? And then off the bench, you'll have Frank Nilakina. Possibly, I want to see Frank Nilakina and Ron Baker in the same backcourt because they're both good defenders, and that'll be hell, I believe, on defensive on on teams. It, you will have lack of scoring though with those two in the backcourt, but still, I, I want to see that. Let's just say that's the case. You can even have uh, you can have Frank Nilakina. And this could be the, the defensive squad, basically. Frank Nilakina, Ron Baker, Courtney Lee, Lance Thomas. It's no scoring. <laughs> this is the bench I'm talking about, though. Kyle O'Quinn for rebounding. Or, remember, there's still Kuzminskis. I think that now they have more of a deep roster. Not a great team. Now, if you mix and match, if you put... If you want to go nuclear, <laughs> what I mean by nuclear is if you put, if Chris Stapps, and people keep saying, oh, Chris Stapps can't play the center. He can play the center because the centers don't bang like that. But if you want to do that, you can slide Melo to the four and, 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 and put Przingis at the five, and then you can have Sessions, Hardaway, Lee, Melo, Przingis. Even though I like the other way around anyway. I like uh, Hernan Gomez did. And you got to understand something. If you Przingis is in year three, man, this is the, this is, if you're a franchise, this is the all-star year right here. You got to become an all-star. And don't forget, why should the Knicks trade Melo right now? We got three teams that's tanking before the season started. Three teams that were in the playoffs. I want to get Chris Stapps Przingis in the playoffs. I want to get him in the playoffs. Great players need to be in the playoffs. Franchise players need to experience what that's like. Young teams need to experience that. They need to get a taste of that. You don't want him to spend his first three, four, five years without seeing the fucking playoffs. That's crazy. How's he going to develop? Because that's because the ultimate goal is to become great. This tanking shit. What the fuck kind of loser mentality is this? Now, let me be quick. Let me be clear. If. If. The Knicks struggle. 30 games into it, they're eight games under 500, and they're already five games from the eighth spot, and things are going bad. Then trading headlines coming, then you make moves because guess what? By then, other teams are going to have injuries and other situations where you're going to have, you can get more value for Courtney Lee, you can get value for Carmelo Anthony, you can get value for Kyle O'Quinn. Who are actually actually all three of them are on decent contracts, seeing Melo's only getting 22 and Tim Hardaway Jr. is getting 18. So, you know, so then you can start to make moves at the halfway point if things are not going well. And then when you make those moves, now that some people say, oh, now you're tanking. No, no, what you're doing is making moves to better yourself. You, you, you're basically waving the white flag. You're still trying to win games, but you realize that this team, as it was cur currently constructed, is not going to win. So you get rid of Lee, you get rid of Melo, you get rid of Kyle O'Quinn. If you can get rid of Lance Thomas, you get rid of him too, right? And you try to get first-round picks, second-round picks, future consideration first-round picks. You get, you get that. You sign a few of your D-League players to fill up the bench. And then you start to keep going building your chemistry amongst your young players. That way, the Knicks will still end up with a top pick. They'll still end up with a lottery pick, but they try to win. Again, it's better than what a lot of people do. You don't start off the season trying to lose. 
You're not trying to lose 18 games. You're not trying to win 18 games for the year. That would be terrible for a guy like Porzingis. That's terrible for him. And you know if you do that, you're not signing free agents ever. So I'm not with that. You know? Now, I want to just say real quick, as I said in the previous podcast, I think Frank Nilakina. If, if Hornacek is serious about defense, I think Frank Nilakina will be starting when the season starts or sometime within the season. Maybe the, maybe the first month of the season he won't start and he'll, he'll, his minutes will build up because then that's saving him for the second half of the season. But one thing I know is that the main struggle that young NBA players have is defense on the defensive end. If he has that, you can always put him on the court. You can always start him at point guard and have a ball handler next to him. Like I said, you can you you can you can have Nilakina, Ron Baker, and Hardaway in a lineup at the same time, and Baker already knows the system and what to do if there's some struggles with Nilakina. So anyway, I'm looking forward to this season. I feel like it's intriguing, you know, and I'm hearing, you know, I just want to say this is the last thing I keep saying that is um I got skateboarders over here. <laughs> I hope they do some tricks. I wish I could videotape them. So, um, I hear people saying that it's Melo's fault that they're going through this messy divorce. I mean, divorce, and it's this person's fault. And I get confused because what does the fuck does that have to do with you as a fan? It's the off season. The Knicks sucked last year. And I don't care about all of that. I don't care if Melo's here, if he's in the Nick uniform, I'm rooting for him. If he's not in the Nick uniform, fuck him. Przingis, I love Przingis. He's in the Nick uniform. If he's not in the Nick, Nick uniform, fuck Przingis. I'm a Nick's motherfucking fan. Whoever puts on that uniform, I'm rooting hard for them. And that's what Nick fans got to understand. We can't be booing our own players. We got to support the jersey because we're Nick fans. We're not fucking fans of particular players. Yes, if they're on the Knicks, you could be that. But the main thing we're rooting for is the Knicks. See, being a Yankee fan, I fully understand that. Yankee fans are fierce, fiercely loyal in that way. If you have on a Yankee jersey, we don't give a fuck if you Wade Boggs. You got on a Yankee jersey now. We don't care that you're Roger Clemens. You got on a Yankee jersey now. You with us. And the minute you leave us, fuck you. Bronx, Bronx, what they say? Oh, I forgot what it's called. Bronx cheer, motherfucker. <laughs> Middle finger. So anyway, just wanted to get that out there as well. Stop worrying about all the stuff that you hear in the media and Melo's doing this and Melo's just, everybody's trying to figure out everything and nobody can be patient. Listen, go have a life. Go enjoy your summer. It's going to be cold and snowy soon. You're going to be upset that you can't even move your car in the morning because you got a shovel for three hours or because sanitation didn't plowed you in. Come on, man. Enjoy this last little bit of nice heat we have. Stop stressing the bullshit. The Knicks are headed in the right direction. I like what they're doing and that's it. And also, as a future note, I, this brings us to the end of this podcast. And I, in the future, I'm going to have a calling show. I'm going to start to develop a call, calling show. I'm still looking and trying to figure out when I can have a block of time. Because that's my thing is I'm very, very busy. And I always tell people this is a hobby. This is just something I like to do. And I try to bring some intelligence to Nick fans because I feel like I have no agenda. I'm not making any money. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm basically on the side of the road. I basically pulled in a dead-end street just to get this podcast out there. That's it. I'm not, you know what I'm saying? But I want to do a little call-in show. I want to give... Nick fans the opportunity to speak and go back and forth and, and express different ideas and opinions. So that's coming in the near future. And my podcast will eventually get back to how they were with a little music in the background, a little greater production and stuff like that. Just right now, I'm just trying to get that information out. You know, I, I all the time when you didn't have a podcast for me from all that time, I just was so busy. I couldn't do it. Sometimes life just takes over. And again, like I said, this is a hobby. When I start getting start getting paid for it, it won't be a hobby anymore. But anyway, don't listen to everything you hear in the media. If, if, if you hear something in the media, do your own research. It takes one second. We walk around with smartphones. We need to be smart. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this episode of Nick's Home Court. I am your host. My name is Greg Armstrong. And everybody have a good weekend. Peace.